So I've generated this image of Hitman and the image looks really good except it's missing one thing, his characteristic red tie. So to fix this, I'm going to send it to inpainting. So I'm going to click the button here, send to inpaint. And now inpaint has a lot of parameters and stuff. So I'm going to go through each parameter one by one and give examples for each. So the first thing I want to do to give actually Hitman the red tie is take out this prompt here and also take out the negative prompt and put in plain red tie because that's what I want. And we're not done there. What I need to do is if you hover the, over the actual image, you should see a paintbrush. And what you want to do is just take the paintbrush and paint over his black tie. And if you look to the right, you can also actually change the brush size. So if I need it smaller, which I probably do, I will just do that and then paint over his black tie again. So like I said, a lot of parameters. So I'll just go over one at this very moment, and that is mass content. Now with mass content, you really only have two types you need to worry about. Original versus latent noise. Now you use original when you're changing something within the image. So you're, let's say in our example, we're changing from a black tie or a red tie. So we'd be using original. And you use latent noise for when you're adding something to the image. So taking our image, if we wanted to add a car, we would have to use latent noise because there's no actual car within the image itself. And the reason you have to do this because Original sort of uses the base image as a template. So in our case, what's going to happen when it's generating, it's going to actually use the black tie as sort of a template to make the red tie, which we want. However, if there's nothing for it to work on, the results won't be very good. But let's say I wanted to add a car to the payment here. If I left it our original, what's going to happen, it's sort of going to use the payment as a template to make the actual car. And it won't really look that good. That's why we have to use latent noise, which would treat it as adding something new, entirely new into the scene. So we're going to keep it at original. And for the inpaint area, I'm going to put it at only must. And I will explain what this parameter does in the next example coming up. So putting the seed at random to randomize generations. And I will click generate. This was the image I was able to generate. And it looked perfect. Everything is right, including the red tie that he now has. So comparing it to the original, we had his black tie, and now we have his red tie over here. So the image is looking pretty good, and we finally have his characteristic red tie. However, we are still missing one more thing, and that is his characteristic Nike Air Jordans that he wears on missions. So to actually change the style of his shoes, first I'm going to send to InPaint to send the new image that we have, so we can make changes on that. And what you want to do is press the reset button over here and just click it multiple times, just so that you should be able to see the start drawing text over here. And we do this just to reset the actual in painting mask. Now for the prompt, I'm going to paste in Nike Air Jordans and I'm going to paint his shoes. Okay, now that I've painted his shoes, I'm going to go into the settings. And because we're only changing the actual type of his shoes, we're going to keep it at original again. Now for in paint area, you get two options, old picture and only must. And the best way to explain it is with an analogy. So take, for example, you have a house and in this house, you want to add a new window. With whole picture, what you're saying, you're sort of saying that we want to add this new window. So we're going to demolish the whole house and build it all over again and remember to add the window. And the reason why this is beneficial is because now the window will look much more natural in relation to the whole house because you're building it from scratch to accommodate the actual new window. Only mask is different in the house analogy in that it's like saying we're only going to demolish the place where we're going to actually put in the window and not the entire house. And because we don't have to spend the entire time demolishing the house and rebuilding it, we're able to add much more detail into the window. However, because we're adding it sort of as an afterthought, it won't look as natural 
in relation to the entire image. And I'm going to demonstrate, first I'm going to use whole picture. So we're telling the image to create the whole picture again, but also remember to add in the new Nike Jordans. So it should look much more natural. So I'm going to click generate. Now we have the Nike Jordans on his feet. I must admit they don't look the very best, but you must pay attention to one thing. And that is the actual direction his shoes are facing. Because now I'm going to use only mast and show you the actual difference. And I'm going to set the padding all the way down and I'll explain what that does right after this. So I'm going to click generate. So now that the image is generated, you should notice one main thing and that is the shoes are facing the wrong way. And this is what I meant with the house analogy about how the window wouldn't look natural. What really happens is that because we said only mast, Stable Diffusion will only focus on the in-painting area and nothing else. It won't look at anything else. And so it didn't know which way the actual person was walking, whether he's walking backwards, forwards, left or right. So that is the disadvantage of using only must. However, there is a workaround around this. So if you remember, I set the only must padding to zero. And what I was telling it is to not look anywhere else in the actual in-painting area. Now, if I increase the mask padding, I'm telling Stable Diffusion to look further outside the actual in-painting area. And it'll take that information as context. So it'll start looking. So in, in our actual example, maybe it'll start looking above his knees, then above his torso, the higher I set it. And from that, it'll be sort of able to work out which way we actually, the person is actually walking. So first, I'm going to set it to a mask padding of around 80 and then click generate. With this generation, I was able to get the shoes facing the right way. I actually had to increase the mass padding to 120 to give stable diffusion enough context information to actually make the shoes face the right way. And that should be it for in paint area, at least the basics of it. Now, moving on to our next example, I'm going to send the image back to in paint again, press the reset button and now I'm going to actually, I want to add litter in the street. I think the pavement right now looks too clean. So I'm going to add some litter and make it look much more realistic. So I'm going to paste in litter and I'm going to actually draw in the area where I want the litter to be. Now scrolling down in the case of mass content, we're actually going to be using later noise this time and not original because we're adding actually something new to the scene. With regards to in-paint area, I'm going to keep it as whole picture. And moving down, we have denoising strength. And denoising strength is how much you want the actual image to change. It's recommended when you are using latent noise to slightly bump it up to maybe 0 0.8, 0 0.9. And that's because, because we're adding something new, entirely new to the image, you want a high denoising strength to actually make the changes go through. Okay, so now that's generated be able to see actually see the litter in the background over here and I'm going to keep it so I'm going to send it back to in paint reset the mask and now we're going to have our final change of today and that is I'm going to actually change his suit into a short sleeve polo shirt now because this is a dramatic change it might be slightly more challenging but I'm going to start painting again his actual upper body and now one thing you may notice with this in painting and actually all my other in paintings is that I wasn't very accurate with that, how I draw the actual in painting area. I was quite rough with how I did it. And the reason I could do that was because of this mask blur setting here. And what it does, it just basically blurs your in painting area. So it's not as strict. So you basically have much more leniency. So for example, when I was drawing the shoes, I didn't have to make sure the shoes were actually a one-to-one -one with the actual in-paint area. And so by using mask blur, you don't have to be that accurate. So the higher you set it, the much more lenient stable diffusion will sort of be with your in-paint areas. And the lower you set it, the more you're telling it to only focus on that in-paint area and nothing else. So I'm going to keep that at four for now. And also what I'm going to do this time is instead of just showing you the final generation with all the mistakes, cut out. I'm going to actually give you a little time lapse on me actually trying to get to the final image. And that's just because to show you that in painting is a very complex process. 
and it's going to take a lot of generations and a lot of tweaking the parameters to actually get the actual final image you want. So don't be disheartened for when you try in painting and your first few generations don't look very good or what you wanted. It really is a complex process and it does take a while to master. So I'm going to start the time lapse now. Okay, so now we have the final generation and just looking at the image, I think it did a pretty good job. Maybe the shadows up here could use a bit of fixing, but it'll do for now. And so comparing the final image with one of our original images. So now we are able to change the image sort of dramatically. So now he used to have a black suit, all that stuff. And now we've managed to change it. And that is the power of in painting. So if you like this tutorial, please consider subscribing. And if you have any comments regarding in painting, any tips or tricks, please put them down in the comments below. As I said, I'm no master, so any tips would be helpful. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.